Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Growing Faith Farms. Today I'm working on getting my corn picker ready for the 2023 harvest season. Um, I'm having some issues currently. Sorry my voice is a little hoarse and cold this last week. But uh, I've got actually two pickers. So there's one behind me and then there's one over there. And uh, I'm having some issues. I bought that one this spring with the intent of using it. I got it for 300 bucks and uh, it's got a bunch of bushings out. And then just oiling it to get it ready for everything, two of the bearings went out on it. So, uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> two of the bushings are out on it and two of the bearings are out on it. So I don't really want to fix it because I have this one over here. I got this one for free from my brother-in-law as a parts machine, but it's in a lot nicer shape than that other one I have meaning that uh, all the sprockets and chains aren't worn out on it. As you can see, it still has the green color to it. And if I would go to the side, it still has the bright orange panels and the ag go sign or new idea. Um, so this one's in way nicer shape, but the reason it was a parts machine was because one of the gearboxes went out and I'll show it to you quick. So when you turn it on, everything moves except for this sprocket right down there because this gearbox is junk. And that sprocket drives all this stuff, which runs the uh, this kind of side of the the rolls down there which are kind of important for this thing running so and then over time it's had uh some chains robbed this chain i actually robbed off to put on my other one that chain is missing that runs back and runs the elevator the belt for the fan is missing um let's see what else there's a paddle that's supposed to go in here to help with corn going in i took that out because i was going to put it in the other one um, but now i'm going to put it back <laughs> So I think I'm going to use this one. And then right where that little lip is, you can see the spring. There's supposed to be a lever there so you can pull a string and it'll shut your elevator off for like when you're going around corners and stuff. So I'm going to steal some parts off of that one and put it on this one. Um, the hydraulic cylinder off that other one will go on here. I have to put the PTO from the other one on this one because this PTO has a slight bow in it. And it's seized up. I can't get it to move forward. You can see I have that huge extension on there so that I could hook it up and see. Um, because I didn't have anybody to help me move the tractor back and slide it in. Um, that extension slides quite a bit on the PTO. So I was able to slide it all the way back and then back up right to the PTO and then slide it into the PTO. So I could just see if this thing worked. And uh, like I said, other than that gearbox, everything works. So I'm going to start by trying my best to get this gearbox out of here and then i'll have to pull the gearbox off the other one and put it in and then all i should have to do is grab those two chains and the belt to make it work in theory so i'm gonna get started on that and we'll see how it goes all right part one is complete gearbox is out along with the uh the shaft that was over there it's pretty worn out wore a hole right through it and uh the splines are all screwed up, which explains why I couldn't get it to slide over like it's supposed to. But if you look in here, uh, this turns and this one does not, and it's all completely worn out. So I might keep that around and have it rebuilt at some point, because I don't know if that other one is in much better shape. It looks like it's leaking a bunch of oil in this area, but it hopefully should get me through for now. i gonna show you what it looks like. There it is, no more gearbox. So now I'm gonna go over there and rob that one. All right, so I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but I got the other gearbox off of the other picker and now I have it over here. It was actually really easy to replace. So the way it works is these paddles kind of just like slide on the end of it on both sides. And uh, all I did was unbolt it and I could lift it right out and uh, it kind of lifted right out of the ends because both of them are like that. And then I just set the new one in, lined up the paddles and pushed it in and it just pops right back in. So that was pretty straightforward. And then I put my roller chain here and down there to run the elevator. So I'm going to fire up the tractor quick and make sure that everything's working. I did put a pipe wrench on this first to make sure that the, uh, the rolls down there weren't uh, locked up or something and that's why the original gearbox broke so i'm gonna fire up the tractor get the pto rolling uh, make sure that everything's working like it's supposed to and if it does then we can move ahead with um, 
taking off the PTO shaft and putting the other one's PTO shaft. And then I think all I have left is to get a belt for the fan right there. Um, my other one's belt is pretty much shot, so I'm just gonna replace it. Um, but yeah, and then switching over the tires. Like I said, this tire's pretty, pretty shoddy as it is, so. And this is off the other picker anyway, so I'll just put the one that was back on here. And uh, hopefully we should be all good to go. All right, so first attempt did not work. The elevator moved like six inches and then it started tripping the uh, loaded clutch down there. You can see those teeth, it just snaps over. So I opened this up and this whole thing was packed full of dirt. So I dug all that out and then you can take off this plate on the back and that was just packed full of dirt. So I'm gonna give it attempt number two and see if this solves its issue getting all the dirt out of it. it looks like everything is working as far as I can tell um, didn't see any issues or things to be concerned about so now I just have to get the PTO off so I'll take the tractor and move it out of the way that should slide right out and then I've got the shear bolt and then that bolt and hopefully it just pops right off and doesn't give me any grief and I gotta get the hydraulic cylinder hooked up and I think that's it to make it, or besides the belt there too, but to make it so I can actually use it. Um, let's see. Another thing I should fix, we'll see how much time I have, is there's supposed to be a second chain just like this one above. You can see the sprocket right there. And it's missing from both sides. So this had one on it and mine had one on it. So I took the one off of this one and put it on my other one. So I'll just grab them both and put them back on this one. Um, and hopefully it should be all ready to go, give it a pressure wash and get all that moss off of it. So I'll keep working on it and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, as you can see, it's a different day. Everything's all wet and it rained. Um, but I got the PTO off. It was as easy as I thought it was gonna be. So I literally just pulled the cotter pin up here where it slid through. Um, you can see it right there. And over here, it was just the shear bolt and then that main bolt that was in the front that's actually reverse threaded. Um, actually, it didn't take me very long to figure that out, luckily. So, but that just slid right off. That came off super easy. So I just have to go grab the other one. And I did find a belt. I think it's a little long, so I'll see if it works or not. But I had that belt laying around in the barn there, so hopefully it works for me. But uh, I can go over to the other picker and kind of show you what I did on it to get it off one-handed yeah it's a little colder too i got my gloves on jacket and stuff yeah so there's the shear bolt there's the reverse threaded bolt i undid those i pulled that cotter pin slid this out sideways no problem and then that just slid right off so i'm going to do it to this one and then i'll carry this one over to the other side so once again that was incredibly easy um the biggest grief i had was the button was a little sticky on the end of the pto they were trying to get it off the uh, tractor that I was hooked to over there um, otherwise it slid right back in over here the cotter pin in slid right over there fortunately i had to use both hands to try and carry it so i couldn't really film anything um, I did grab a new shear bolt. Uh, both the one that was on here and the one that was on that other one were pretty worn out. Uh, meaning that they were old, rusty, and uh, there was grooves worn into the side of the bolt where it had been spinning for so long. So since I'm in here anyways, I'm just going to replace it. Um, 
as far as what to do next on this now that i've got the pto on since it rained and everything's all muddy anyways i think i'm actually just going to break out the pressure washer and try and get it a little cleaned up and get all this moss off before i finish um because those feeder chains that go down there you have to crawl around under the snout to adjust the tensioners and stuff and get them in and over there it's wet grass and over here it's wet concrete so i might save that for once it dries out just a little bit so my corn is still a little wet so it's not like i'm in a huge hurry and everything's all muddy now so that seems like a good project for today so yeah i'll i'll cut scene to better weather and getting it finished up all right it's a little nicer weather today so i'm working on the corn burner again uh, a little windy hopefully you can hear me all right um, I got the tire switched over. That was pretty easy, you know, eight bolts, jack it up, switch the tire. And then I took the uh, hydraulic cylinder off since naturally they want to sit in this laid back position and it was already extended all the way out. It was really easy to just pop it off and switch it over. I didn't have to maneuver it or anything or do any prying. So next I think on my list is I want to get this slip clutch right there. This thing for it turns the elevator off for when you're going around corners and I think it's just that bolt and there's another one right there and this mechanism pops off because it actually kind of sits above the slip clutch and when you pull the string it pushes on it a fixed piece so it looks actually really easy to get out then once I get that out and switched over um, I have those two feeder chains in there and then I'm done with this thing and this thing can go sit in the weeds until I need it again so I have the part out. It was as easy as I suspected. Other than there's a spring in there I didn't see. There's the two bolt holes and then through that middle one, there's a little pin uh, with a hole on the back side and a spring hook to it. So you have to unhook the spring to get that off. But otherwise it was pretty easy. So just very limited range of motion sitting down in there with your head up right where the part goes. So now I'm gonna try and get this one in on this uh, picker instead. All right, I'll try and show this the best I can, but this is as far back as I can get the camera. Here's the lever. It's hooked up, and there's the slip clutch. So when you pull on this rope, it pushes that plate forward. And you can see right there, that's how it disengages the elevator. This chain right here drives across here to the other side. Yeah, there's the other chain that actually goes to the elevator. And there's a clutch right here. So when you pull this, it opens it up, your elevator shuts off. Then you let go of the rope, it snaps back, it shuts the clutch. So that's how it works. It's very, very crammed back here. So I'm going to crawl out of here. And that's it for this piece. And uh, now we just have those feeder chains left. So I finally have this thing all back together. I kind of missed the last part because I forgot to film it. But I got these two chains really easy. Uh, just pull those two pins, pop the top link off, slip out the other piece, and just unwrap it and move it from the old picker, which is now up there in the weeds. You can see the top of the elevator way over there. And um, so now all I have left is to oil up the chains on this thing. Um, I already greased everything. The grease circs are kind of weird because like some bearings will have one and then other ones don't, where you think there should be some, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to oil up the chains and then that's it. And uh, hopefully the next video of this is when we're picking.